Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amarin Sviertsma. I'm a professional violinist and sometimes I make little videos for YouTube. Today's video is all about me writing my alternative biography. You may be thinking, what on earth is that? <laughs> and that makes sense. So a few months ago, I came across Daniel Tong's alternative biography and that was because the Things Musicians Don't Talk About podcast shared it on their Instagram. It's basically a version of events where you're talking more about the trials and tribulations and the challenges that you faced getting to the place you are now in your career instead of just showing the glossy highlights. It's a way to be honest about yourself and to help others in their journey of becoming a successful musician because it can be quite difficult sometimes to keep the morale high when you're being constantly rejected and thinking that you must be the only one and that maybe you should give up, which is absolutely not the case. I was super, super inspired by reading Daniel's alternative biography and also the ones that were written by the um, podcast people, um, Hattie and Rebecca. And yeah, basically I just felt that that was something that I could share as well and it would be a great way to talk about some challenges that I've faced and um, just my journey so far becoming a professional violinist. I must say that I'm very lucky and I count myself lucky to be a performing violinist with concerts that I'm asked to play and that um, yeah, I've been performing for many years and you know, <laughs> knock on wood, that I still will be able to for a while and that I'm lucky that my string quartet, the Barbican Quartet, that I play with most of the time, we just won an international competition, so we're um, that's just very helpful for creating the career that you want. And I'm also very fortunate that I can just make things work, that I'm mentally in the right place at the moment to be able to cope with a career that involves a lot of traveling, etc., etc. And yeah, I'm just, I feel lucky that I have the life that I do, but that doesn't mean that there were no problems or issues or um, questions or what's the word? Curves, <laughs> um, pivots along the way. So I wanted to share those with you and I hope you enjoy this video. Just a few little things before we get started. I would love if you guys send me some questions for my Q&A video. I'm planning to do one fairly soon and that would be really, really nice. And also I will link below, I'm going to do a run for cancer research because my dad passed away more than 10 years ago um, from cancer and I would like to support the cause. So I'll put all that below and um, yeah, it would be great if you want to support me in my 10k practice. Um, but now let's get into <laughs> my my real issues <laughs> and getting to know me a bit better. See you in a minute. Alright, so let's get started. I have my little trusted laptop here. And my biography. So the first line of glossiness reads, born in Utrecht 1991 to a musical family, Amaran studied with Koosje Weisenbeek at the Royal Conservatory in The Hague and with Verabets at the Conservatory in Amsterdam. In 2013, she moved to London to study with David Decano at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, completing her master's at, and artist diploma and fellowship with distinction. All right, so, gotta think a little bit. Um, this is definitely all true. Um, yeah, how do I do this? All right, you guys, so I've been writing for a little while now and I came up with actually quite a lot strangely i thought i would might have a bit of a block i sat there for like five minutes and i was like what do i do and then i started writing i'm mainly talking about my kind of formative years from age two until 18 or even the my first years at the conservatory and i've written about when i start the violin and that um i begged my parents to let me start with the the violin and that Basically, there was no teacher to be found, so my mom found this Suzuki method teacher. They teach you by just by listening and playing games and that kind of stuff. I wrote that my mom was incredibly patient. She would practice hours with me and would get maybe one song done or one note done 
and most of the rest was just playing and cuddling and getting stickers for my zero accomplishments. Um, and then the, when I was five we left that teacher because she um, got quite angry that I hadn't practiced and my mom was like, okay, but she's five so, you know, a bit of leeway would be good. Anyway, she decided to take me out of lessons there and luckily found Kosha Weisenbeck who was my teacher for, uh, what is it, 13 years from age five until 18. And you know, my relationship with Kosha was so complicated. I think she was an amazing teacher and I always felt that she had my back as a teacher, that she really believed in me and the reason that she was very strict and, and she was, um, was that she thought I could go very far and I think the reason that I never wanted to give up and the reason that I, you know, of course I was always, there was a long period that I was nervous for most of my lessons and I think it's because I maybe knew that I hadn't practiced quite enough or that I hadn't quite been as diligent as I should have been um, and later on that got a bit better because I, I was very diligent and I practiced a lot. Um, yeah, so I think it's always a, a tough relationship with a, with a tough teacher but in the end ultimately it feels like she had our best interests at heart and I feel that that was really my where I learned the most as a violinist and everything else goes on top of that but without that I would not be anywhere I am today. And then I go on to talk about my first competition and that when I was 12 I lost my first competition. I went and I thought I would do quite well and I lost. So I didn't even get to the final and then I told myself okay next year I want to win. Actually it was two years later and I did. So I mean I guess that's partly talent and just maybe also perseverance that I just I really wanted to win. I wanted to prove to myself that I could do that and just wanted to push so I practiced really a lot and um, you know made progress and practiced everything by memory and I just spent hours like trying to internalize the music and know exactly what I wanted with every little corner. <laughs> it's kind of insane right? If, if I look now at a 12 year old I'm like okay that what how how does that work <laughs> i know um yes and what else did i say um oh yes that i think looking back back at my teenage years that probably the mental pressure of school and violin and other stuff going on um, being a teenager was a lot for me to handle and that um maybe at the time i wasn't aware but i was under a lot of pressure from lots of sides and I'm not sure I dealt with that amazingly but I did the best that I could. Um, of course I had support at home but um, at that time my dad was also quite ill with cancer and um, yeah I think there were a couple of places where maybe I was a little bit by myself and people tried to support me as best they could but if I didn't let people in then you know. <laughs> Um, that's not really possible. So it was a good time for me as a violinist. I made a lot of progress and I really worked very hard and I dedicated myself to the violin but maybe some other things um, got neglected a little bit. You know, if I did it again, would I do it differently? I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, my battery is about to die so I have to switch that out and then I'll talk a bit more about my next paragraph in my student years. Okay, so I've been sitting here writing for quite a while and I have a lot of paragraphs. I don't know if it really necessarily fits with my own biography so much because I list just prizes and master classes and people I've played with and impressive orchestras and that I've led and that's about it. Um, so I feel like this biography is definitely much truer to how I feel about myself and how I feel about my work as a musician. Um, so after my studies, let's see where are we, um, I guess, so basically we're talking about school and my competitions and the school pressure was a lot, um, then I say that 
in 2008 when I was 17 my dad passed away and that that was a very difficult period for me and um, I think I kind of dove into playing the violin then and kind of hid away from all the emotions I was feeling um, it wasn't necessarily a great time for me but it was a good time to focus on my playing um, and I say that I decided to stay close to home to study so I decided to go study in Amsterdam instead of go abroad for my bachelor's because I somehow didn't feel ready to leave the country just yet and I just wanted to be kind of close to home um, because it was destabilizing. Then at the end of my degree I won third prize in the big national uh, violin competition in the Netherlands and uh, I guess my memories of that are, I hardly remember the first round, which was like a kind of technical round, and the second round I loved, and I played with a good friend of mine at the time um, on the piano, and we, we had just rehearsed and played so much together, and I felt so comfortable in that repertoire, and I loved playing, and it was in the small hall of the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam, which is just a beautiful acoustic, anyway, everything felt great, and I passed to the third round, or the final, and I guess I hadn't quite prepared my concerto enough and I just felt kind of out of place and worried and nervous and I remember going for runs like every day before the competition because I was just the the anxiety was here and I was just like how on earth am I gonna do that um, playing my memory anyway I played Brahms concerto it was an amazing experience and I guess I was just elated to have won the third prize and also at the same time a little bit disappointed that I hadn't been able to show you know my true colors or just exactly who I was in my playing and just to feel 100% free and I guess I talk about that a bit later too this kind of element of stage fright and that I guess I don't get incredibly nervous uh, when I do competitions I can manage to do them without having to take beta blockers or drugs and um, I feel fortunate but I definitely deal with nerves and there have been times where that felt like quite debilitating so it's kind of more a frustration towards myself that I think well I could have done that way better and, and why wasn't I involved in the music and why wasn't I <laughs> more alive and loving it because I actually love being on stage it's just this kind of pressure and expectation that I put on myself then I talk about moving to London and loving, really loving my time studying with David Decano, whom I studied with for five years, and that um, my quartet got started in my second year, and just, it was such a strange feeling of this excitement and also feeling like going from being like quite a big fish in a small sea in Holland where I kind of knew the musical world and I had done well so I was being booked for concerts to being kind of a nobody for a little while and of course I had a good teacher so that was useful in the school <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to you so it's kind of like they trust the teacher to take good students and therefore those students will be asked to do nice projects so luckily I managed to show my potential or something <laughs> um, in the beginning and they put me in the string quartet in my second year and basically we were asked to do kind of a pre-concert for the London Symphony Orchestra and that was Shostakovich you can actually find that piece or our performance doll online I'll link it below um, and yeah they asked us what our name was after a while and I was like oh haha ha, bar and quartet and with the quartet we like to say that the our pre-concert in the Barbican was our first concert, but actually it was our third, so we're lying through our teeth. <laughs> well, first concert in the UK, maybe. Um, yes, and just that my time in London, I mean, I still live in London, I love London. It's just such a huge city and it's so easy to feel a bit anonymous. Um, of course, I was lucky that my family were close by in the Netherlands, and so I could kind of hop over quite frequently. I guess there was a lot of, you know, <laughs> there was a balance, let's say, between small wins, so I would get selected for a little foundation or a little prize here or there, but most of the time that was counterbalanced with a lot of rejections and not getting auditions, not getting master classes, and 
um, I spoke with a friend today and she said, oh, I'm, I'm good at hearing no's and you just have to have such a thick skin to constantly just to be able to deal with <laughs> kind of no, 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 not good enough, not good enough and just keep going, keep believing in yourself but it can be a lot of kind of mental effort that you're putting in to keep believing in yourself. Um, then I say different phases I went through and just ups and downs and then I'm talking about after school so after music college I stayed in London my fiance lives in London we would met already at that point and I guess it's this strange situation where you go from being heard once every so often I wasn't having a lesson every week anymore at that point but at least having feedback and that you go to this strange place of going on stage for the first time with a new piece that has never been heard by someone that it's just your opinion on if you think you're doing a good job or not which is going to be heard by the audience and before that it was always my teacher telling me oh this is good or oh this is bad and in a way you don't have to think for yourself I mean, you do but you you prepare something to the level where you think it's good but it's still at that level where you think, oh, maybe my teacher will think it's good, but if not, I can change it. And you have to go through that kind of phase all by yourself now, without your teacher. So you have to really be much stricter on yourself and much more self-critical. And I wonder if that's also something where maybe this like element of stage fright comes from, that you're so hyper self-critical and then maybe I can't always let it go. So I'm on stage just keeping up that critique. It would be interesting to kind of delve into that a bit more, but I think at the moment I'm really doing much better with stage fright and I also have another video about getting nervous and how I deal with these kind of things and I think it's just a question of where I am mentally, believing in myself and enjoying being on stage and maybe not putting thousands of tons of pressure on myself for each note that maybe I can let something slip from time to time and it's not the end of the world and maybe that actually makes me play better. So it's like this strange psychology. If you let go, then you're giving away control and therefore maybe you play better. Yes, I just say that <laughs> through a lucky connection, I got asked to be a concertmaster of an orchestra. So what happened was that I went to a festival, played chamber music with someone who then recommended me very, very late to their orchestra, the Kamerata Salzburg. And well, I talked to her on the phone and I said, well, actually, I've never been a concertmaster before. I've, you know, I have very little experience. I'd been concertmaster of the Guildhall Symphony Orchestra, which is not a professional orchestra. And that was it. And I said, well, look, if you want, I can give it a try, but <laughs> I have no experience. So, okay. And they said, well, we'd like you to come. So I did that and, you know, the pay is good. So it was a very, very exciting experience. and. I remember just feeling completely inept, like, what am I doing here? It's like typical imposter syndrome, like, why is everyone trying to listen to me? Because I'm the youngest here, I'm the least experienced, I've never played this piece, everybody else has, like, why am I the concertmaster? Um, and that took me really many years to kind of get that in me. I remember once I went to be the concertmaster in the Santa Cecilia Orchestra in Rome for a week and I just couldn't sleep the night before the first rehearsal. I remember calling Gabriel, my fiance, at like three in the morning, panicked and was like, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. How am I ever gonna do this? I was just so nervous and I was like, why on earth did they choose me? Why on earth am I here? <laughs> I was like, it's this mental battle of like, oh, I can do that. And then you're like, but I can't do that. Anyway, these days I'm much more secure and I think that I still feel that from time to time, especially with you know composers of pieces that I don't know well, like let's say Bruckner or Mahler Symphony, where I'm like, I've never done this. And then I end up enjoying it, you know, let's not forget that the concerts generally, I'm like, oh, this is amazing and I, I'm not doubting myself anymore at that point, but it's always at the beginning that I think, oh, why am I here? And recently that's just gotten better. I, I started to realize that maybe they have a reason for asking me back and that they have a reason for trusting 
my instincts and maybe if I haven't played a piece it's not necessarily a bad thing to come at something with fresh eyes and fresh feelings. Um, yeah so I think I'm gonna leave it at that it's pretty long already <laughs> and I hope you guys have enjoyed me kind of talking through my thoughts on my career so far. I'm 31 years old and I've been playing the violin for 29 years <laughs> and sometimes I just I can't imagine a life without it. I sometimes wonder what a life without it looks would look like or would have looked like, but I feel so lucky that I can do this job and that I love my job and yeah. So say hi if you want to and leave me some some comments or open up about something if you want. Yeah, if you've ever experienced anything like this and definitely go check out the things musicians don't talk about podcasts. I don't have their sticker, sticker here but um, I'll link all their details below and go check out Tutti, my fiance's company <laughs> and yeah I'll also put the, the fundraiser stuff below. Um, it's such an important goal um, to raise money for cancer so leave me some questions for my Q&A upcoming video and yeah hope to see you next time and subscribe if you like. Oh my god, so many requests. <laughs> Bye you guys! Bye.